A controversial new video of Ashland police officers has been circulating on social media. Hillary Clinton announces her vice presidential running mate and learn what your dog can teach you tonight on Channel 15 News. Controversial new video circulating on Facebook is making quite the impact. Our reporter Alex Mesidu has the story. Can't! I'm autistic! Ah, I can't relax! A video that shows several members of the Ashland Police Department taking a man down to the ground as he screams that he's being hurt has been making rounds on social media. Um, you know, watching them take him down made me want to cry. It was hard to watch. It was really hard to watch. The reactions have ranged from comments supporting the Ashland Police to death threats. I've received death threats. Um, I read an email on Facebook from somebody yesterday that said, I hope you all bleed and I hope that all of your children are made fatherless over this. The incident started when Redwood, the person who was arrested in the video, began arguing with officers while they were investigating a possible unlicensed and unvaccinated dog because Redwood believed that the officers were violating the suspect's ADA rights. It was then that things got a little bit more heated. Uh, the man known as Redwood was told to get back several times, yet he continued to advance on the officers. He continued to uh, try to inject himself into the situation. And so the officers made the decision that he had crossed the line, liter literally and figuratively, and that he was going to be arrested for interfering with a police officer. Ashland Police Chief Ty O'Meara believes that the police took the right course of action when arresting Redwood. I have had people come to me from the education world, people that have worked with autistic children, that have said, Ty, the way your officers handled that is exactly the way you are supposed to handle an out of control autistic person. That you're supposed to get one person on each limb and get control of that person. That is exactly what the officers did. Others believe that the situation could have been de-escalated prior to making the arrest. And they also violated the ADA memo. They have a memo to police departments on how to handle people with mental illnesses and or disabilities. And they say that your intention should be to de-escalate the situation. In particular, that helps with autism, um, where you want to bring the agitation down. Uh, and in this case, it was escalated. As of right now, the Facebook video has been seen over 180,000 times. According to Ashland Police Chief Ty O'Meara, the full body camera video of the incident will not be released until after the court trial. Reporting from Ashland, this is Alexander Mesa Dew. Back to you. Ashland Police Chief Ty O'Meara asked community members to please wait for the full body cam videos to come out before making their judgments. Finding housing might get easier for students in the next few months. On Tuesday, Ashland City Council voted on the second reading of the ordinance that would prevent renters from being discriminated against based on their age. This work is, the, is part of an ongoing campaign by Southern Oregon University students government. In 2013, they began working with Ashland Fair Housing Commission to add students as a protected class to the Fair Housing Ordinance. The ordinance being voted on falls short of what they wanted, with age being used instead. Council members are confident, that, however, that this will prevent future discrimination against students in the Ashland community. You may be seeing more buses out lately. That's because Rogue Valley Trans Transit District, or RVTD, just added Saturday services to their Route 10 bus route. The Saturday service came back as a result of the passing of Measure 15141 last year, which taxed property owners an additional 13 cents per thousand dollars of assessed value in order to further fund local bus services. The measure passed last year with a 61 percent yes vote from the Jackson County community. For a bit of the lighter side of the news, we'll turn to reporter Wanda Borland for our segment of Focus On. I'm Wanda Borland with your Focus On Channel 15 news report. 
Today we are focusing on lavender in Southern Oregon. Here in Southern Oregon, we are fortunate to have two lavender festivals, one in June and one in July. For Deborah Thompson, the owner of the Applegate Valley Lavender Farm, the festival is an exciting opportunity. We were the first to open to the public for a lavender festival. There's been lavender out here for a long time, but we were the first uh, lavender festival in the area. And uh, that was six years ago. This will be our sixth year opening for the Oregon State Lavender Festival. That's in two weeks, July 8th, 9th, and 10th. There are many different healing and culinary properties of lavender. Lavender has been used to treat depression and anxiety. Lavender oil can also reduce blood pressure. Chefs around the world also use lavender to spice up some of their dishes. Here's Bonnie Rinaldi from the Lavender Fields Forever Farm to tell us a little more about culinary lavender. The number of, that are good for culinary purposes generally, it's the whole genus of Angustifolia, which is just a sort of softer, sweeter. It's typically not the one that uh, oils are commercially made of, but it's a softer, sweeter one that gives you more of that uh, a lavender flavor you can you can uh, enjoy in baked goods and other spice mixes and that sort of thing. The Lavender Fields Forever Farm, the Applegate Valley Lavender Farm, and the English Lavender Farm all sell lavender products at their farms and online. For Sue Owens, owner of the English Lavender Farm, merchandising is a full-time job. We've been at this farm since 2014 was the first time we opened and um, we grow mostly English lavender here. So I do Ashland Tuesday Market and uh, Medford Thursday Market and then also Grant's Pass on a Saturday and Jacksonville on a Sunday. So we have a booth for each of those every week. Lavender farms throughout the region will be open throughout the summer. Representatives from the Lavender Fields Forever, from the Applegate Valley Lavender Farm and from the English Lavender Farm all said they will sell lavender products to their customers that call in throughout the year. Reporting from Ashland, this is Wanda Borland. Back to you, Alex. Today, Hillary Clinton officially announced Virginia Senator Tim Kaine as her running mate. Clinton introduced Tim Kaine to a packed crowd in Miami today. And Kane spoke on his religious background, his family, his life, his experiences abroad in Honduras, and addressed the crowd in Spanish multiple times throughout his speech. The Democratic Convention is in two days, where Hillary Clinton will likely be named the presidential nominee for the Democratic Party. Recently, Southern Oregon University students heard some dark stories of tough times. Reporter Alex Mesidu has the story. Recently, SOU got a reminder of a not-so-bright part of Japanese history. The UN club at SOU hosted a talk by Hiroshima survivor Hideko Tamura Snyder. Her speech made me think we have to keep talking about the history of World War II and World War I. The atomic bomb drop on Hiroshima destroyed 90% of the city of Hiroshima and killed over 80,000 people on immediate impact. For Snyder, Talking about her memories of the event has not always been easy. You know, um, we're born, we live, and we die. And it is our responsibility to pass on the wisdom we learn from our own struggle. Snyder hoped that event attendees would walk away learning something from her talk. To move forward and to answer the call that was asked in the ancient text when Cain was asked by God about his conduct and Cain's retort, am I my brother's keeper? 
to be fully human, we have to answer to that call with a resounding yes. This August marks 71 years since the Hiroshima bombing. Reporting from Ashland, this is Alexander Mesa View. Back to you. From August 6th to 9th, a multi-day peace vigil in memory of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki bombings will be held. Go to peacehouse.net slash calendar for more information. A theater in Philadelphia is taking the trage tragedy of the Umpqua Community College, or UCC shooting, and making it into a play. New City Stage Company is producing a play called Roseburg that talks about the issue of gun control and talks about Roseburg in the past, present, and future. The play sparked a reaction from the Roseburg community, a petition on change.org asking for the play to be banned got over 2,000 signatures, including at least two of the people shot during the incident at UCC. One person wrote, I was in the classroom and was one of the many shot and injured. We have gotten so much hate mail and even death threats since the shooting. We have been called crisis actors to enforce gun control. Now there is going to be a play about what happened to us to enforce more gun control. Playwright Ginger Dale did not respond to their requests for comment. Usually we tend to teach tricks to our dogs, but our reporter John Letts talked to one man who believes dogs can teach us a thing or two John Letts has the story. In Josephine County, we have a resident who has had some very good experiences with dogs, so much so that he's written a book about it. After living with as many as 19 dogs, Paul Handover moved to Southern Oregon and wrote a book called Learning from Dogs. The book shares his experiences with a German shepherd named Pharaoh. Paul found that writing a book was a huge undertaking but with encouragement from a local writing group, he finished the book and put it on the market. I asked Paul what inspired him to write this book. I had cause to be speaking to a good friend who uh, by background was a professional psychotherapist and uh, he mentioned that dogs are creatures of integrity. And this was when I had Pharaoh, my German shepherd, that's him on the cover of the book who is still with us but now a very old dog. And I thought, yes, they are creatures of integrity. And that struck me as such an important principle. Paul's fondness for dogs is obvious, but it goes beyond just his own personal impression. We do need to learn and to have in our lives on a daily basis because they deliver such beautiful rewards. So, learn from dogs and save the world. That's the message. Learn more by visiting the website learningfromdogs.com. Reporting from Josephine County for Channel 15 News, I'm John Letts and back to you, Alex. It's always great to hear from our furry four-legged friends, isn't it? Well, thanks for tuning in this July 2016 episode of Channel 15 News. I'm your host, 
Alexander McGlasson.